that, complete that's all, all that's all not that's all uh, we have another okay. dilemma I mean, uh, <laughs> Okay, good morning. Okay, so uh, yesterday we were busy with the uh, specifics and the generalities, and today we'll, we'll drop that and, and, and tomorrow as well. Um, okay, I want to go on a different different journey today. I think it's going to be a three day trip, actually. Okay, and the trip is as follows If somebody has a pot of 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 uh, let's say chicken soup, okay, and a small amount of <laughs> small amount of uh, non kosher substance falls into the chicken soup. Okay, a couple of uh, measurements of a few ounces. Falls into the chicken soup. Is the chicken soup kosher or non kosher? So typically today, most of us would say it's non kosher. Why is it non kosher? Because we say the taste of the non-kosher food infuses the chicken pot, the pot of pot of chicken soup. Okay, uh, this is what we call tamic acre. That the taste of non-kosher food is like the is like the non-kosher substance itself, because you have a couple of ounces of non-kosher food falling into let's say two or three quarts of chicken soup, so that makes the entire chicken soup forbidden. Now, this is contingent on another problem, and this is the subject we'll explore over the next few days. Today, we begin with the first problem, which, and these problems are going to be intrinsically linked, as we'll see tomorrow, and it's called the heteromid star of Lister. What does that mean? In order to, in general, in general, in order to violate any, almost any prohibition in the Torah, you need to have a sheer certain amount now, obviously, the amount is different in terms of time, right? Mm -hmm. Things are only considered to have taken place one after another. <clears throat> if there's more than a tech de dibur, right? It's got to be at least three words worth of time in between oh, the really? so okay. that, the oh. that one follows another. I trouble you. Okay. Um, now, in terms of in terms of eating or drinking, typically the measurement is uh, a kezayas for eating. Measurement of one one alf. Uh, Charles, can I trouble you to mute your uh, mute your Zoom? Absolutely. I just I, I had muted. I hit. It. Got it. Got it. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, now. In, in, in terms of drinking, it's usually a revius. Let's say a person violates the laws of Hitzah on Shabbos. Hitzah is to carry. So how much does he need to carry? So it depends. If he's carrying food, it's got to be at least a significant amount of food, which is a kezayas. Let's say he's carrying uh, microchips, right? So I guess presumably one microchip <laughs> is going to be significant, even if it's you know a tiny one. Right, because it costs thirty-five dollars for that one little tiny chip. It doesn't have to be a kazai's worth of microchips. It's not food. Okay, and and similarly, this obviously is going to permeate any 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 uh, any either prohibition or commandment. You're always going to need to do a certain measurement of it. Okay, here's the question: A guy is we are all prohibited to eat pork. So a guy takes some slices of pork and he puts it on a sandwich, okay? And there's, he eats a kezayas, one a measurement of one olive, whatever that is. And it the olive is actually not just an olive of pork. It's an olive of pork plus mustard and bread and whatever else you put in the sandwich. So only the pork is prohibited. And it's a cold sandwich. He didn't make like a panini, you know, he didn't, he didn't heat it up or anything. So did he violate the prohibition of eating pork or not? So it's sort of a very fundamental question. There's a couple of fundamental questions here. Fundamental change, Eric. Uh, I have to say this brings us perilously close to actual social interaction. I'm not sure I'm okay with this. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, what Steve's doing? I know it. So, so, we, so we have the question is, 
in general, we, we, we typically the law of Kazayas, the, 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 the measurement, the amount of Kazayas, the amount of a Kazayas typically defines a quantity of eating as well. So over here we have eating, he ate a Kazayas, but he didn't eat a Kazayas of pork. He ate less than a Kazayas of pork. And again, he ate bread that was cold. So it wasn't like the pork infused the bread with taste. The bread is bread. Technically speaking, if you separate the bread from the pork, you probably could eat the bread. You know, just take off a small layer for whatever was absorbed, but the rest of it's kosher. It's the viol you know, obviously, as we know, is how the halacha is possible. It's debated in the Gemara. That means that if a guy consumes less than a measurement or violates a commandment, but less than the measurement, then he, he violates the Torah commandment. That's the halacha, although it is a debate whether that's rabbinical or, or, or biblical, we rule that it's biblical. Okay, now we have another. So the typical law is that you have to eat a kezai of pork. You, you will not get punished unless you ate a full kezai. What about nazir? <laughs> A guy takes a piece of bread, one kezayis of bread, and he soaks it in wine. Right? Wine is prohibited to drink wine. And he the, the absorption is less than a revius of wine. Obviously, if he was drinking straight wine, the measurement would be a revius. So he's drinking less than, he, he's sort of eating less than a revius of wine. Right, and, and the total consumption of his kezayis, you have to figure, is going to be, I don't know, let's say 60% bread and 40% wine, or maybe the opposite, whatever the absorption rate of bread is, maybe somebody else knows better than me, whatever it is. And but you have to presume here that amongst his kezayis, certainly, it's, it's, it is certainly the case that it's not 100% wine. So if he only eats one kezayis, just one kezayis, he measures it on a scale, okay? And... It's it's really bread that's soaked in wine. Obviously, some significant amount of it is bread and not wine. Right, right, right. Did, did he violate the prohibition of, of nazar or not? <clears throat> to give an exact analogy, what happens if a guy did the same thing with pork? So he has a, a, a I don't know, some sort of lard dish, or, or uh, must be 95% of the dish is lard or something like that, and he dips his bread into it, absorbs the bread, and measures out one kezayis and eats it. The halacha is he does not violate the prohibition of eating pork, eating non-kosher food, because he did not eat one kezayis of it. What if the sandwich is eaten in Pesach? <laughs> it's a very good question. It's a very, even worse. Yeah. That, no, it's a, we'll get to that. Well, what about chametz? Does chametz have the same rules or not? This is a question called heter mitzdara flesser. Do we say that that because you're eating a prohibited substance, even if the amount isn't a full measurement of prohibited substance, because it's combined with heter, with permitted substance, it, you, 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 you violate the prohibition. So what are other examples? <laughs> chametz is a good example. Is it true by chametz? Let's say a guy eats, he eats a little bit of chametz together with a, a potato, right? Wants to combine Pesach and chametz, you know? <laughs> So this this sort of is the is the background for the discussion, which we'll go to tomorrow, which is called Tom Kicker. Tom Kicker is where you have the taste infused. What does that mean? That means you cook the soup with the pork. Until now, we're not talking about cooking. Mm. We're talking about immersion. In other words, we're technically speaking, the items are really separate. You know, where we made a sandwich or something, the, the taste hasn't been directly infused one to another. Tomorrow we'll get to Tom Kicker and we'll see how this how the the uh, ideas interrelate. Okay, so you know, it's, it's very, this is very fundamental, especially when you're learning kashras. This is sort of the baseline for the, the number one sugya in learning, <coughs> in learning the laws of kashras, which is Tom Kekar. And it's a fundamental debate here amongst the Rishayim, and it's very, very complicated. We'll try to choose one pathway and stick with it so we don't, we don't have to go through everyone else. But it's, it's a very, you know, halacha is actually very simple. The... The Talmudical background is actually quite complex. I would say it's probably the most complex sugya for for such a fundamental idea anywhere else. You know, it, it's it's understood as so fundamental, and yet when you look at it, it's so complicated. It's not far from simple. 
Okay. Rabbi, these are not inspirational bromides on your part. <laughs> no, that's for tomorrow, no. <laughs> okay. Amr, 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 Ravu said, Amr Yechan, the name of Yechan, and call Isu in Shabbat Torah, Ein Heter Mitzdaraf Leisser. All the prohibitions of the Torah, Heter is not Mitzdaraf Leisser. That means that if you consume a, a sandwich, right, with a little bit of bread, a little bit of cucumbers and pickles, and a little bit of sli small slice of pork too, and the, the bite was exactly one kazayas, that's what you bit into it. But you did not consume a full kazayas of, of pork. You only ate a small amount of pork. The rest of the kazayas was pickles and, 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 and bread. In that case, ain heter mitzdarafletz. The heter is not, does not combine with the prohibition and you do not violate the prohibition. Chutz me isuri nazar, except for nazar. Shri amr Torah mishras. Torah speaks of mishras and often. If he soaks something in, in grapes. Now what does that mean? Uh, last line of, last words of 35b. We'll be on 36a in just a moment. Okay. So Mishras, what does Mishras mean? You you dipped the bread into wine. So you, you dip the bread into wine. Um now if you if you're eating, obviously you're eating it because it's bread dipped in wine. Let's say you eat a a, a revius of wine. Right, and typically you drink a revius of wine, but if you're eating it, right, mm -hmm. obviously, right, if you're using a measurement of liquid, but over here we're talking about you're, you're consuming the liquid by eating a substance um, infused with the liquids or uh, immersed in the liquids. So the bread is a sponge for the liquids. So if there was if there was a revius yain, then there was a revius yain, there's an amount of wine. Why do you need to say Mishra sent off him? <clears throat> why, why would I think that that's different? If, if the Torah prohibits you from consuming a certain beverage, mm -hmm. you go ahead and take the beverage and put it into a sponge and squeeze it out of your mouth or, or put in a piece of bread and eat the bread and you have a measurement of forbidden liquids, then obviously you're liable. So what does the Torah say, Mishras? Mm -hmm. Mishras tells me lead, that, that Heter Mitzahar Flesser, you don't actually have to have a full revius of wine. Having a, let's say, 60%, <laughs> you have a Kezias, 60% of it's wine, 40% is bread or whatever the ratio is. That would be sufficient to be chayev in Nazar. Okay. And now the Gemara is going to deal with this concept. This will take us to the end of the day. Uh, we'll get to one more. Today? The end of today. Uh -huh. and, and tomorrow we'll get to the other the other <laughs> side of the coin, which is Tam Ke'ikar. That's, that's the more complicated part. So we'll deal with this one. We'll deal with one more thing in a moment. Okay. Ziri Yamar, Ziri says, it's not just Nazar. Afsa or Bebal Takturu. Okay, what does this mean? So we have a law, you can't eat chametz on Pesach, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you, you also cannot bring chametz on the Mizbech. Mm. You never bring chametz on the Mizbech. Never bring chametz on the Mizbech. Never bring chametz on the Mizbech. And there, I, I mean, aren't there some subcomponents of some types of offerings? There's one, are... one or two offerings that are chametz, and those are not, there are sacrifices, but they're not directly brought on the Mizbech. Oh, all right. Okay, I believe the shte halacha, the two loaves of bread that's brought on on uh, on Shavuos is an example of uh, of chametz. Okay, now so Zairi says same thing. If a guy is 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 bringing a carbon and he's bringing a a, a kazayas, a measurement of chametz, a lot, but it's not really a measurement of chametz. It's sort of half a measurement of chametz, half a measurement of something else. Together with it, let's say he's bringing the mincha and there's levina together. So he's he was making a mincha. He should have brought the mincha fast enough that it didn't become chametz, but instead it did become chametz. He, he waited too long. He delayed. He waited a few hours. It, the, the dough started rising. So he brings he brings some amount of levina plus some amount of chametz, and and uh, Ziri says that also incurs the violation because we say hetem and star flisser and you violate the prohibition. Of sacrificing chametz, come on. Whose opinion is this like? Kirbalazar, the Dorish call. Or the borrow the article for a moment. Oh, there it is. Kikolsa or hold the 
Okay, uh, the, the Pasuk is Kichol Sa'ar V'chol Devash, Lo Yisaktiru, you can't bring Sa'ar. Sa'ar is sourdough. It's a reference to dough that has, that has risen. Um, okay, so, so and, and therefore, his ear is going to the opinion of, of Rabbi Lazar. So the Mara says, Ihachi, if that's the case, Indian Chametz Nami, then we should also include, the, the Torah says, Kol Machmetzes, all Chametz don't eat. This is obviously the, the the prohibition of Pesach, Passover. And the Torah says, kol, everything. What's everything? Everything means hetem and sir. So it's not, so in other words, the question is, is Eri saying there's a second category? The answer is really there's a third category, right? It's, the second category is bringing chametz in the Mizbeach. The third category is eating chametz on Pesach. If you eat a, a small amount of chametz on a piece of potato, that is also hetem and starifless, sir. Samar says, you're right, and a chanami. It's true. It's a third example. El afuka me abaya. Ziri is coming to tell you not like abaya. What abaya say? The Amri says yes. Hakhtara bepachas mikazayas. Abaya has a unique. So typically, we associate a measurement of food with eating, right? The reason why, if you do hitzah, you carry on Shabbos in a place without an eruv, you're liable. You're liable for chil Shabbos, is because. The reason why the measurement of that, if you carry foodstuffs, is a kazayas is because that's what's significant. In terms of food, what's significant is, is consuming food. A significant amount of food is a kazayas. Like I said, if you carry microchips, it would be one, one, one usable, one significant microchip. You know? Okay, and therefore... Um, one second. Okay, and therefore... And therefore, a bias is as follows. Even though it's significant to food is a kazayas, when it comes to bringing things in the Mizbeach, you don't need an, a significant food item. Who cares? God, right? Even though last week we spoke about God eating on, God eating on the Mizbeach, and the Mizbeach is sort of the food of God. But obviously it's not food, and God doesn't eat in the sense that we eat. And therefore, kazayas is an insignificant amount. There's nothing, not that it's insignificant as in useless, but in, there is no significance to a kazayas. Says a bias that that uh, when you want to, when you violate the prohibition, prohibition by bringing something that shouldn't have been on the altar, you violate the prohibition even with a, with a minute amount. Any amount, that's enough to, to violate the prohibition. Okay, clearly here, if Ze'iri is telling you, Hetram and Staraf Le'iser, obviously, that means you need an amount. Otherwise, in other words, what are you combining prohibition with, permi with permission? If you have to combine something, obviously there's a measurement. And that's not like a buyer who says there's no measurement. According to a buyer, if you even bring a small amount of comments, you're, li you're liable. Kamashim Lan, Enak Torah Pachas Mikzayis, he disagrees with a buyer, and he says that, that, that uh, prohibited sacrifice is even less than a Kizayis. Yosef Ravdimi, Vikamar Lala Hashmaitza. Ravdimi was, make, was going through this, this Kamara. Ace Abaya. Abaya had a question from him. Okay. Uh, the question we don't get to until later. Let's let's start start learning the Gemara, and we'll get to the question in a moment. Hamakfa shal truma v'ashuma hashem shal chulin. We have an exact translation, sort of a cereal. A porridge, a porridge, a porridge. And so now, if, forgive me, I'm not uh, I'm not a porridge fan. So maybe someone here is a porridge fan. I'll correct my ignorance here. I believe a porridge is a sort of a cereal substance. Mm -hmm. There is sort of a grain, mm -hmm. and then there is. At least in the time of the Gemara, there was shemen and shum. There were uh, mm -hmm. sort of uh, maybe more pungent or spicy flavors. Mm -hmm. So you put in a little bit of oil and a little bit of garlic, and that was sort of how the cereal was consumed. So that was the three bears. <laughs> yeah, that's no, exactly exactly. Other than that, I've never heard of it. Okay, so Hamak uh, <laughs> truma So you have this cereal. There's the grain of truma and the garlic and the oil were chulen. They were not truma. And it fully, according to Rashi, it's interesting. The porridge wasn't mixed. Sort of, so it's, you know, you know, like they have a hummus with like the garlic in the middle. Like people, some people mix the garlic in. Some people eat the garlic with the hummus. So apparently, according to Rashi, it doesn't seem like it was mixed in. According to Tysis, it was mixed in and that gives Tysis a bunch of problems later on in the sugya. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the tful, tful, what's a tful yaim? Okay, a, a tful yaim, we, we, 
we, we spoke about Tumah. We know that the, the father of Tumah, which is the loose, you know, sort of the source of all Tumah, is is a dead body, right? A person mm-hmm. who touches the dead body, he becomes an he becomes an Ava Tuma. That's the most most Tuma a live person can get. Uh, I'm sorry, dead body is considered the grandfather of Tuma. A person that touches a dead body is the father of Tuma. Ava Tuma. Okay. That person, if he touches somebody else, becomes a Rishon. If he wants to purify himself with the ashes of the Parah Duma, what happens is he purifies himself, he goes to the mikvah. Before nightfall, he's considered the status of a Rishon. And he's called a Tzfuliyan. He's sort of Tahar. He just needs to wait until Harav Shemesh, until the sun sets. He has the status of a Rishon Otoma. Now, uh, Chulen, Chulen meaning food that is not... Um, if he is a Rishon... You don't. You can't make a rishon l'tumah. A rishon would make only a sheni l'tumah, right? And uh, and um, he touches truma. So so now the, the truma is going to be is be it'll be a sheni sheni l'tumah. <clears throat> uh, one second. V'nagat ful yom b'mitzasan. I actually think here. Hold on. I think the ful yom has a status actually of a sheni. The ful yom has a status of a sheni. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Tfuliyam has the status of a Shane Otoma, second level. So Tfuliyam cannot make Hulin Tomei, he can only make a uh, Truma Tomei. Okay, um, one second. Okay, so he touches the, he touches the truma part, the, the, the grain of the, the, the grain of the porridge is, is truma. So Apostle is cool and he he invalidates the whole thing. What happens if the the oil garlic thing that was truma? The rest of the porridge was chulin. If he touches the part that, that has the truma on it, so that part you separate, you throw it out, can't use it, you burn it, but the rest of it's kosher. Okay. Valvina, but we have the following question. Maka Magai, am I possible? One second. Okay, interesting. Okay, um, so the question is, it's, it's interesting. Even according to Rashi, it's a debate whether he touched the the part that was that was that was truma, meaning the oil and the oil and the garlic, or he touched the whole thing, or he touched some other part of it, and just the part that he touched we remove. Be that as it may, according to some Rishonim, you can only make something tummy if you have a measurement of food, a food worth worth of it. So the Gemara asks, "Am I puzzled? Why did you, why does it become tummy?" <clears throat> Am I possible? But Omar Rabbi, in other words, what has become possible if there's no if there isn't a measurement of oil? Presumably, I, I'd have to guess that in this parish there's only a small amount of oil and garlic, and not and not a measurement of the kazayas. But Omar Rabbi 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 explains. Omar Rabbi 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 what's the reason? That there actually is there is there is a kazayas there worth of oil and and garlic. Okay, my timing. One second. This is because an unclean is liable for lashes. Uh, because of, uh, right. You know, it's because it's because of the Zion, so therefore you get, you get lashes if you eat it. What if it wasn't a One second. If it wasn't a then it wouldn't become tummy. One second. Okay, so the, Gemara pres- so the Gemara presumes here what happened. The Gemara presumes the most logical thing here is that there actually isn't a Kazayas worth of worth of truma. It's actually less than a Kazayas. But but since if you eat half a Kazayas truma together with half a Kazayas of the porridge of the grain, which is chulin, you'll you'll get malakas. Why? Because heter and Therefore, that's why it becomes tummy. 
That's where the term spreads. And this indicates to us that Hetem and Starif Lesser. Together? Together? More than usual. <laughs> so, okay. Sigmar so says, no, Lai, not necessarily. My Kazayas, take it Kazayas, but the There is a measurement of, there, there actually is sufficient quantity of, of oil and garlic that, that you could actually, if you, you could, you could technically speaking, eat a full Kazayas worth of oil and garlic. Obviously, it's going to be quite difficult, and maybe we'll get to it in a moment. Um, so the Gemara says, uh, um, so the Gemara asks, is, is that measurement to the right, uh, b- biblical? So the Gemara says, I'm really in. Indeed it is. Okay. Hold on a second. <clears throat> okay, one second. So the Mara says, Yachi, if that's the case, am I plead your abono lad or belaz or bekuta chabavlin? What do they translate kuta? The, the cheese. Kuta is like the cream cheese. cheese. It's, it's like a, a hideous cream drink. cheese thing. A hideous Babylonian drink. No, it's a, it's more of a more of like a solid substance. It's what? It's more of a solid. It's more like a spread. A spread. Really? Like a like a sharp sharp cream cheese or something. A, spoiled a, cream a cheese. A really terrible version of a yogurt. How about that? Yeah, some something like that. Okay. So the Gemara says, if that's the case, why do the rabbis disagree with Rabbi Lozer by Kutich Habavli? So what's the scenario there? It's a similar case to what we have here. Uh, one second. We are presumably, you have a mixture of chulin and truma, and it was only a small amount of the chulin. Uh, one second. Only a small amount of the, of the uh, there's only a small amount of truma in that mixture. And the rabbis say the mixture does not become Tomei, and Rabbi Lozer says it does become Tomei. Now, it, according to what we're saying, that you, you, it would only become mm-hmm. Tomei if there was a full kazayas of Tumah, so why do the rabbis disagree with Rabbi Lozer? So the Gemara says, is different. Why is that? The leg of pras, because it's impossible to eat a kazayas of kutuch habavli. It's going to like spoiled, <laughs> spoiled uh, yogurt. Right? Why? If he actually eats a kazayas, then he's crazy, and he he's not normal, and, and that doesn't that doesn't mean that you could eat a kazayas. It's like drinking a cup of vinegar. He's a, if somebody drinks a cup of vinegar, he's a crazy person. You don't drink a cup of vinegar. Okay. If you eat it correctly, meaning you spread it on food, you know it's like it's like a schug type of thing, and there's sharp foods. So, but it's impossible to eat a kazayas worth of schug. You know, it's uh, uh, sharp, hot, peppery stuff. You know, if you spread it on your bread, it's impossible. You won't get to a kazayas within, within a, a, a achilles process, meaning you have seven minutes to eat a kazayas. You can't eat enough, you know, bread with hummus, with, uh, you know, sharp stuff spread on it to consume one full kazayas of thing in, uh, of, of spread in seven minutes. Of That's John Perry. What was that? That's John Perry. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> fine. Now we get to another Gemara. The next two Gemaras are really sort of a similar version of the same Gemara. First one is as follows. Asay, we learned, we learned as follow. We learned, we learned the following. Following question. You have two mills. One mill is chulin, one is one is shrumo. So a meducha is sort of a small pest, uh, mortar and pestle, small, small bowl that you grind something. Well, the fun of shtei and you have two pots in front of you. One's truma, one's chulin. What happened was you, you, you one of these pestles was, was doing uh, spices that were truma. One of them was doing spices that were chulin. Now keep in mind, truma is only right? Biblical truma is only grain and 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 wine, right? Truma siroccus is if you take off spices on black pepper or red pepper or whatever it is, they're abominous, rabbinical. Gemara doesn't know doesn't know that yet, but but you know but but we should know here that this is ultimately the, the explanation. Of this is a rabbinical concept. So when we have two we have two pots, one's kosher, one's non kosher. Okay, but it's it's only non kosher because of a rabbinical law, and then something falls into each pot. One is kosher, one is rabbinically non kosher. 
we say that the kosher fell to the kosher and the non-kosher fell to the non-kosher. Okay, now the Gemara here is presuming that this is even their rice, and the Gemara will resolve. It's like, like, I, like, like I explained to you. Something, something, the truma falls into one, the, the uh, chuma falls into another one. We don't know which one it fell into. Shtein and Taurus are both permitted. Shani Yomer, because I, I, I understand chuma to chuma naflu, chuma to chuma naflu. I, I argue that even though I don't know, I pretend as if the truma fell to truma pot and the chulin fell into the chulin pot. The non truma fell into the non the non truma pot. Okay, these are because I asked the pras the rice. So am I? I mean, shani Yomer. So if you say that the the problem here is is that it could easily happen that you'll eat. A, in other words, if the small amount of of uh, of truma spices actually fell into the chulin spices, and we say you, you, you're you're liable because I asked this price, meaning you have a large pot of of soup, right? And let's say that let's say that we'll make believe the true the, the spices here we're talking about. Let's say it was uh, something like um, lentils. Okay, we're putting lentils. One of the lentils was truma, one was chulin. You put the lentils into the pot. It is possible technically to eat a volume a measurement. Of lentils in the chulin pot in one in one seven minute sitting, it's very easy as a matter of fact. So therefore, it could come to a biblical prohibition. Maybe the guy will eat a full kazayas worth of lentils in the chulin pot, and he'll be eating a kazayas lentils of of, of truma. <clears throat> so Mars is okay. So what's the solution? Elamai hetem and starf leiser. So he'll say that hetem and starf leiser, meaning that even if you eat less than a kazayas of lentils, if you eat it combined with you know, because I, you know, zucchini of chulin, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to be violate the prohibition. You still have the same problem. You didn't make anything any better. If anything, you even need to eat less lentils now, because you eat lent, you eat your truma lentils with your zucchini or 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 you know sweet potato, whatever it might be. Okay, but what's the real explanation? The, the tavlinim, the spices. You know, think of red pepper, black pepper. These are all truma derabanon. These are all rabbinical truma. So if you have a pot of cool and you have a you have either a possible rabbinic spices falling in, or possibly um, or possibly chulin spices falling in. So we presume the chulin spices fall in because it's it's rabbinic in nature. So therefore, the rabbis allowed you to presume the permitted fell into the permitted and the prohibited fell into the prohibited. Even though that presumption, there's no reason per se for that presumption. Okay, it's very similar Gemara. We'll finish with this. You have two baskets. One's chulin, one's chulin. Not, not, not truma. Well, if name stay son, and you have two bags, you have these two large uh, silos. What we'll call it uh, one of truma, one of chulin. You have two bags. One's of chulin, one's of truma. Somebody poured one one bag into into one silo, one, the other bag into the other silo. They're both permitted. Shani because I I say chulin to chulin aflu, truma to truma aflu. Okay, this is a problem because this is grain. Grain is truma de raisa. So what's going on here? Also, if you say kazayas de achilas pras is a biblical prohibition, so it could easily happen that the grain in the chulin, which contains in it a kazayas worth of truma, is the kazayas worth of truma is going to be eaten in one go. And therefore, a guy is going to violate the prohibition of truma. So why, why do we permit you to make this presumption that the permitted fell into the permitted? There's no reason for that presumption. According to what I'm saying until now, that heter and starf iser, so then it, this makes sense because heter and starf iser only works when we have a, an equal or a majority of prohibition. But over here we have a majority of permitted grain. So therefore we say that the, the prohibited grains are nullified. And therefore you're eating actually permitted grains. But if you'll say that the, the law of is even when there is a majority, because what are we afraid of? Perchance it might occur that he'll actually eat one full kazayas of that specific grain stuff. So, so then it should still be prohibited. If you say hetem sarfas, you say the whole thing is bottle. So there is no there is no prohibited substance here. But if you if you say that that a prohibited substance, you eat a volume of prohibited substance, even when there's a majority against it, you're still liable. So what what if, so this should be this should this mixture has the possibility of incurring a biblical violation. 
So the Gemara says, same response as before. Um, Truma today, in the, you know, in other words, we're, we're, there isn't a majority of Jews living in Israel. All of Truma is Jeroboam, including grain and wine. It's all rabbinical. And therefore, this Brisa is talking about such types of Truma. And in, in such types of Truma, Truma is Manazah, um, because it is all rabbinical, therefore we permit you to make this presumption that the permitted fell into the pot of permitted. Okay. Now tomorrow we offer an alternative explanation for Midras. And that is Tom Kicker. That will be tomorrow. Stina. One second will take us another another we'll take again till uh, Thursday till we finish, till we wrap it up. Okay. <laughs>